I'm Julie Faithann Balzer and take a fresh new look or perspective on art today on Make It Artsy. So we are doing some faux shibori dyeing. So what is shibori? Well, it's a tradition of dyeing in Japan that really uses indigo dye. And you can see some samples that I have here. Now it looks maybe like this fabric is textured or folded. And that's the whole idea of shibori is basically you're folding and scrunching. Sometimes people even use stitch to adjust the fabric in different ways to give it this texture. Now this is a really easy and fun technique to do, but it does require actual indigo, which usually requires a big bucket, and sometimes you need to do it outside because of the smell, and if you're like me and you live in an apartment, you might be looking for a way to do it that's a little less, um, well, a little lower tech, a little less commitment. So I have a method for you, and I hope that you're going to like it. So the, what you basically need is you just need some plain fabric of some kind. I happen to be using PFD, or prepared for dye muslin, which just means that it's more ready to take a dye. But honestly, it doesn't really matter because the faux way that we're doing it, whatever fabric you use will be sure to absorb some of the dye, okay? It doesn't have to be white. It could be a color, it could be a pattern, whatever you want. So the next thing is you have to decide what pattern you want. So let's go ahead and look at some of our finished samples and just talk about how those were created. So you can see that simply by folding, into little squares or even on the diagonal. That's how you're getting these first shapes, okay? And if you want something that's a little larger, if you're dyeing like some yardage or something like that, then you can talk about folding into triangles and you can see how those triangles are in this fabric. This one you can notice is two different colors and that's because even though traditional shibori is done with blue or indigo, you can use other colors of dye if you like. This starburst pattern is created simply by scrunching the fabric up. And here you can see we've overlaid some of those large triangles with the little squares. And this one, we simply folded it accordion style back and forth. So let me show you just how easy this is. I'm gonna take my fabric and I'm going to begin by accordion folding it. So that means front and back. If you've ever tried to fold like a fancy napkin or anything like that, you've probably have done this. Now, there are a million different ways, and I don't think that's hyperbole or any kind of exaggeration. There are a million ways to fold, to crease, to, you know, do whatever to get it exactly how you want. So just do what feels good to you. So you can see I've accordion folded it. Now I'm gonna accordion fold it in the other direction. So towards me, and then back, and then here and then back. Now you can use rubber bands at this point and that's where some tie dye comes out of, but the more traditional way and the way I like to use is to use thread. So you can use any kind of thread, but I have had better luck with a uh, synthetic thread because I find that the dyes don't come off at all. So you just want a piece of thread. It's also really strong. And then you're gonna go ahead, wrap it around. The fussiest part here is you have to get that first knot. Once you get the first knot, everything else is pretty easy. So I'm just gonna tie a double knot right in here, pull it tight. Boom, and that wasn't hard at all. But what we wanna do is we wanna super secure our package because you can actually, the thread can give you some interesting textures too. So I'm just gonna keep tying this up and you wanna tie it probably not just in one direction, but you wanna tie it in the second direction as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab some thread, wrap it around, and really secure this little packet so it's 100% in there. And don't worry about extra threads hanging off or anything like that, that's not a big deal. That, oops, I broke my thread. So I'm just gonna go ahead and retie it. This is why I always cut my thread a little bit longer because I've been known to do that before. So here you go. Once that's secure, you're gonna dunk it in some water. This is just regular water, just because I want the fabric to be able to absorb the dye. You can leave it sitting in there or you can just dunk it like I just did. Okay, once you've dunked it, now it is time to glove up. Whenever you're working with dyes, it's a good idea to wear your gloves because you just don't know what's gonna come off 
on your hands. And this can be a little bit of a messy process, not quite as messy as having to have a giant bucket full of indigo dye, but still a little bit messy. So once you have your gloves on, I am using spray ink that is formulated for fabric. So that's really important. And I have three different shades of blue. So you're just gonna spray and you wanna turn your packet all around. I'm gonna use all these different colors to give it some nice variety. You can see that one's much lighter. This one has a more turquoisey feel, but I'm trying to get into all those nooks and crannies that are in here, okay? And I wanna just absolutely saturate this 100%. I'm mimicking what would happen if you dumped this into a vat of indigo, which is how traditionally it's done. Then I am gonna let that dry overnight to be super safe. Once it is dry, you're gonna have a little pack like this. So then all you have to do is cut off the thread. This is my favorite part, because this is the reveal. It's like you get to see what is this little package that you left overnight. Now, you can wear gloves for this too, because you can see some of this dye is still coming off on my hands. But I'm gonna take it to an iron, which is both gonna heat set what has happened and take out all of the folds. But really, really simply, you can see how we have dyed this beautiful pattern in. Now, the reason that this is on the diagonal is simply because I accordion folded it on the diagonal instead of straight. You can see that right there. But this is gonna go ahead now, and when it flattens out, it'll be absolutely beautiful. Now, I have some other ones that are dry too that I wanted to show you. So, for instance, this one with the little bunches. Again, all I'm gonna do is snip out the threads and we will reveal the starburst pattern that's in here. So I'm gonna take just a second to go ahead and get all these little threads out. But I think this is something that you can do with kids or whoever else because it's fun for them to see the reveal and to have that moment. Now my thread is all cut out and you can see how those bunches created what you might be used to in some very traditional tie dye. It has that starburst pattern that's so cool. And last but not least, I have a packet here where I just sandwiched it between two wood blocks. And this is just scrap wood that you have around. You can also get these discs and shapes. You can see it was triangle folded. And when I open it up, the dye has only gone into the places that were exposed at the edges and the blocks of wood have kept the rest of it white. They also had had some red dye on them, which in fact transferred into this fabric. So now I have three very cool pieces of fabric that were simply made with a little bit of folding, a little bit of spraying, and a little bit of patience, a super easy way to have a new perspective on your old fabric.